we now have some really exciting discoveries coming from our mysterious neighbor, Neptune. Or I guess, far neighbor. The farthest planet in the solar system. And in this case, these are some of the more unexpected discoveries nobody can currently explain. And let me try to show you why. Here's the simulation of Neptune from Space Engine, where you can clearly see clouds on the surface. But now we have these very unusual observations that imply most of the clouds seem to have completely vanished. And though some of the older images from early 2000s contained a huge amount of clouds, the recent observations from the James Webb reveal almost nothing. And that's pretty much the opposite of what scientists expected to find. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these recent discoveries about Neptune and its unusual atmosphere, mostly focusing on these two recent discoveries from two separate papers. But first, I guess, a bit of a clarification. Obviously, because it's very distant from the Sun, a single year here is approximately 165 Earth years. And basically, a single season is approximately 40 years. So all of these changes are expected to be somewhat seasonal. Right now, Neptune is believed to be right in the middle of its summer. But instead of warming up, it seems to be actually doing the opposite. It seems to be getting colder. This was previously discovered by using infrared observations from a lot of different telescopes. And all of this is probably a result of very specific gases in the upper atmosphere of Neptune. Here we have methane, which usually absorbs sunlight and warms up the atmosphere, but also various types of hydrocarbons, such as ethane and acetylene, which usually reflect infrared light, cooling down everything. And so usually the balance between these gases produces various temperature fluctuations. And it's always been assumed that these changes are going to be kind of gradual. But between 2018 and 2020, the changes were quite extreme and quite sudden, producing unusual observations and unusual seasonal effects. And the first explanation here actually involved our Sun. A lot of these observations seem to be correlated with solar activity. Now, correlation is not causation, but it was still a pretty intriguing discovery. We'll come back to why this is important in a few minutes. Likewise, a few years ago, there was a sudden appearance and then disappearance of a strange dark patch on the surface. Two, actually. These were very likely storms, but why they disappeared so suddenly and why they appeared so suddenly was not clear. But once again, potentially related to the solar minimum that happened around this time. And even though Neptune is 30 times as far away from the Sun as planet Earth, more and more evidence seems to suggest some of the fluctuations here follow the typical 11-year cycle that happens on the Sun. Our Sun goes through maximum activity every 11 years, although actually a lot more recent evidence suggests that the cycle might be 22 years, and so every 22 years the cycle is much stronger than before. Anyway, things here get a little bit more complicated, but the video in the description explains this better. The point is that it looks like the Sun influences some of the more complex molecules in the atmosphere of Neptune, transforming the upper atmosphere and thus affecting some of the features on the surface. But these recent pictures showing us no clouds take this to a completely new level. For example, here is a graph showing us solar cycles, or total solar UV radiation, and the amount of clouds on the surface. And based on the video in the description and the study related to this, the assumption is that this solar cycle is one of the strongest in the last few decades. The Sun is going to be extremely active for at least a few more years, and it's going to reach the peak of its activity in 2025. And because the Sun was already active in 2020, it may potentially explain why many clouds suddenly disappeared, making Neptune look very different. But I guess the obvious question is, why? How does any of this work? Well, we can only speculate, but the assumption here is based on what we know about methane on planet Earth. Methane is not a stable greenhouse gas. It usually survives in the atmosphere for approximately 12 years, but it's also actively destroyed by solar radiation. And so in this case, by receiving more UV light during certain periods, it's possible that it maybe destroys more methane, thus cooling Neptune down. And because a lot of these clouds seem to be made out of methane as well, there is a possibility that maybe this destroys the clouds as well. Although honestly, this is just a really big assumption. There is no actual answer just yet just visual observations and certain correlations with solar activity. Nevertheless, after almost four years now, there are still very few clouds. And we know that the Sun is very active. So something really complex must be going on here, affecting all of these observations. Nevertheless, even after almost four years now, there are basically no clouds. With many of these unusual processes still not truly understood, and most likely being a combination of many different factors. 
with the conclusion being that the solar radiation, specifically ultraviolet radiation, when strong enough, can trigger various photochemical reactions that can affect the clouds on the surface. Now, it's quite possible that it destroys the clouds, but it's also quite possible that it actually forms them. So yeah, it's not clear exactly what's happening. For example, in this graph, the correlation is that high UV radiation means more clouds. But based on the studies from planet Earth, we know that UV radiation destroys methane. So it's probably really early to come to any conclusions. Likewise, this recent study identified that the highest albedo, or reflectivity of the planet, was back in 2002. But then it dropped dramatically in 2007. In this case, high albedo means lower temperature. But between 2007 and 2015, it started climbing again, changing the temperatures even more. Moreover, it's kind of intriguing that none of this seems to happen on Uranus, which is much closer, and which also contains relatively similar components. But when it comes to the storms, they probably come from within Neptune and are most likely not related to photochemical reactions. And so, in the end, we have this really complex interaction of various factors that basically seem to go against predictions made previously. The planet is cooling down and not warming up, it's losing its clouds, and it even lost all of its storms. None of this was predicted years ago. Luckily, new observations from the James Webb, along with the fact that the Sun is going to become the strongest in 2025, might allow us to finally come to certain conclusions in the next couple of years. But because one cycle here is 160 years long, and we only have like 20 years of observations, most of this at this point is a bit of a guesswork. We just don't have enough data from other cycles. But I guess to make things even more complicated, a recent independent observation that you can find in the description below, with a study by Patrick Irwin, discovered another really interesting feature on Neptune by scanning it through different frequencies of light. This was done using what's known as MUSE or Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer, part of the Very Large Telescope. And so by splitting the image into various wavelengths, they were able to spot an unusual formation detecting a strange dark spot that's never been seen before, which maybe represents a clearing inside the clouds, or maybe something else entirely. At the same time, they also discovered unusual bright spots, extremely close to that dark spot, that could be new types of clouds we've never seen before on Neptune or Uranus. Because it seems to be on the same level in terms of depth, there is probably some kind of a relationship between these unusual features. And so whatever this is, it seems to be a new type of a phenomenon inside Neptunian atmosphere. But I guess more impressively, just the fact that they were able to scan this in three dimensions by using specific wavelengths. It essentially allowed them to create three-dimensional representation of the entire atmosphere of Neptune, more or less represented in these four separate pictures. At the moment, the assumption is that this dark spot is probably formed by reduction of atmosphere by about 5 bar and probably is made out of condensation of hydrogen sulfides. But the strange dark spot is surrounded by these strange white spots that don't seem to exist for a very long time. But more importantly, this feature definitely seems to be very different from the previous dark spots that were discovered in a completely different layer of Neptunian atmosphere, which once again reminds us that Neptune, unlike planet Earth, has a variety of different layers interacting with one another, with layers deeper and deeper within, containing their own mysteries, their own features, and their own strange formations that then might influence the layers above them. Which also means that maybe these clouds and a lot of these formations we're missing now are also a result of some of the activity underneath and not really the sun after all. So yeah, it's a mystery, nobody has any answers just yet, and someone should probably launch a mission to Neptune sometimes in the future. One of the Voyager probes was the only time we visited this beautiful planet and nobody has ever gone back since. But we really should. So much stuff to discover here and so many things to learn about when it comes to exotic atmospheres, strange planets and of course their moons. But for now, that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention. Check out previous discoveries about Neptune in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.